everybody grandma bev here from life with grandma bev and today i want some snacks so look what came how they read my mind you know my universal yums box let's see open and see what's in it this one oh from france francais no parlez-vous francais <laughs> either so they've got of course this little little map thing on here and it's got you know like a yum scoreboard in case you have a bunch of people that you're doing this with and what your favorite one was a scavenger hunt and you know stuff that they don't do and of course they always have a little booklet and that will have the the goodies in there that i can read the descriptions of and it also includes you know explore france which said we're going to france september we'll be buzzing over to france just for like an afternoon from a cruise ship. But, <sighs> France in 60 seconds. Oh, make mushroom galettes, G-A-L-E-T-E-E-S, a recipe there for that. And then we get to the goodies. So here's a cute sticker, the Louvre, Louvre. Is there an R in there? Louvre, not <laughs> Louvre, Louvre. <laughs> so let's get started. Usually the first things are the salties savory things, which are usually the ones that I save for Bob. So here are, ooh, ooh, real puffy with air. Les chips here, Francais. Brits. It's all in different language. Potato chips flavor, a a aioli, A-I-O-L-I. Real French potatoes with sunflower oil, no natural, no natural, no natural flavors. Natural flavors, no preservatives, no added MSG. Well, let's cut this open and let the air out of the bag for one thing. And let's try to taste. Ooh, got a sniff of it just by letting the air out. Wrong. Real oniony and garlicky. <laughs> Bob would like that. Ooh. Well, what to say about it, huh? <laughs> Forgetting about that. Um, yep, yeah, it is. It says here. Garlic, <laughs> garlic, a aioli potato chips. Garlic lovers and this yum yum equals the perfect relationship. If it's a special occasion in Provence, you'll surely smell one thing: garlic. Aioli, lots and lots of garlic. That's because everyone will be eating aioli, the local garlic and oil dip. It's ordinarily reserved for Fridays when it's served with boiled veggies like green beans, carrots, and potatoes. When Ash Wednesday comes around, aioli is served with poached cod. And on Christmas Eve, it's snails that typically get dipping. That's one reason why I don't eat snails or can't eat snails because the first time I was introduced to them was on a cruise ship. <laughs> I think our very first cruise. And they brought this little round thing and each little, you know, had a, a slug in it. And they reeked so strongly of garlic that now whenever I smell garlic, it's like, oh, oh, oh slugs. <laughs> Bob loves them, of course. Um, your invitation to Provence's pungent tradition? These ridged potato chips, which taste just like the real thing, but with no dipping required. Yes, you will get garlic breath, and yes, it will be worth it. <laughs> Great, I mean, I'm going to be tasting it the rest of the day. Okay. Then we have Sibel Corn Snack. It's cheesy flavor about that. Mm. Yeah. But on here they call them French cheese tubes. How can you govern a country which has 246 varieties of cheese? 
that would be a dilemma. These words were famously spoken by Francis, former President Charles de Gaulle, who served from 58 to 62. Well, that wasn't very long. <laughs> yeah. And Francis cheese obsession has only grown since then. Today, there are a whopping 1,600 varieties of fromage, from soft, creamy camembert to tangy roquefort to cascoe merzu, <laughs> a Corsican cheese infamous for containing live worms. Oh my God, this better not have it in it. Where's the ingredients? <laughs> No, okay, then I'll try it. You can see why locals eat 60 pounds of cheese per year, unless you're still caught up on the worm thing. Yep. <laughs> but don't worry, there are no worms to be found in these zesty tubes, just a whole lot of cheesy flavor. Well, let's see. Cute, cute little things. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like these, but I'll let Bob have them. <laughs> I'll let him have them. Mm. Okay, now we get to the real goodies, the heart of the box. Les Mer Marais Poulard from 1888. Sables, pure... Bure or something like that. <laughs> I can't read what all even in it. These cute little biscuit cookies, they call them. Cute. You know, I keep debating on canceling the subscription because they don't really get a whole lot of viewers. I like this, the treats. <laughs> and I've been doing them for two years. I've given people enough time to get, you know, enthusiastic about them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice, simple little cookie. Got butter in it. Okay. The butter biscuits that have made the French swoon since 1888. Is that why they're swooning all the time? Just freeze. Before you try this famous French shortbread, you should know the main ingredient is sand. We know, let us explain. Sables are centuries-old cookies made by rubbing cold butter onto flour and sugar to form tiny particles of dough. Given the dough's striking resemblance to sand, these golden grid crumbs came to be called sable, sable, or whatever they pronounce it, the French word for sand. So yes, these deductible cookies are made with sand, but not the beaches of the French Riviera kind, the very buttery and very edible kind. Okay. Now, if you're wondering if it's time to go try them for yourself, our answer is go. And I did. That would be mine. And they have these uh, mini strawberry bonbons, chewy candy. Ooh. Sounds like my name on it. Come on. One of you come out. <laughs> Almost looks like a, a little piece of uh, bazooka bubble gum. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those will be gone by the end of the evening. I should hold them up. What one? Love strawberries. You have France. <laughs> I opened it. You have France to thank. French royals were the first to farm the fruit back in the 14th century, with King Charles V boasting 1,200 strawberry plants in his garden. 
Then in the late 18th century, it was also France that crossbred two New World strains, the Virginia strawberry and the Chilean white strawberry to create the modern strawberry the whole world knows and loves today. But don't say merci just yet. We've got one more French strawberry innovation to be thankful for. This yum. <laughs> These uber juicy, uber chewy strawberry balls were the top voted yum in our last two France boxes. So we could think of no better way to kick off our new French adventure. Pop one in your mouth, give it a chew, then join us in saying one big merci. Too bad. What's merci beaucoup mean? And if you feel the same way we do about the yums in this box, it surely won't be the last time you say that today. No. <laughs> Okay, next we have Truffles Bar. Okay, there's four truffles in here. Let's see. Poor Bob won't even get a chance to try these because he's out of town. Because <laughs> they're not going to last. Wow, getting chocolate all over me. That's how they look. I mean, just picking them up and holding them. Don't have anything here I can wipe it on. Mmm. <laughs> so good. I wouldn't normally do this, yes, I do. <laughs> but I think I'm trying to go on with the video and I'm getting all over. <laughs> Don't you love watching me do this? Okay, what's it say about them? Cocoa-dusted chocolate truffle bar. Four French truffles in one uber decadent bar. And it's good. According to legend, this yum came about by accident. In 1920s Paris, confectioner August Augusta Escoffier was making a pastry cream when he accidentally poured hot cream into the wrong bowl. A bowl filled with chocolate. Rather than bidding the melted chocolate adieu, he experimented. Realizing the paste, called ganache, could be molded, he rolled it into balls and coated them with cocoa powder. The result? A luxurious chocolate ball that looks a whole lot like France's mushroom truffles, hence the name. We can't think of a more decadent accident, except maybe devouring all four of the truffles in this bar before anyone else can. <laughs> Someone else thinks like me. So, keeper for me. And the last item, they always have what they call their yum yum bag, which always has like little pieces of hard candy or something, you know, something small. So let's see what they put in this time. <laughs> this time we've got two caramels and two... Uh, fruity things. One that is uh, orange and one is strawberry. It, it, it's chewy. Assorted French fruit chews. If you're looking for France's most famous candy makers, look no further than, why do we have to say the words in French? Co Confissere du Nord or Confectioner of the North, an appropriate name considering their factory is located in Tour Coin at the tippy top of France. The family-owned company has been producing bonbons, the French word for candy, since 1912. And nowadays, it's the country's leading independent confectioner. One bite of these candies and you'll see why. These strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, and orange chews remind us of Starburst, only bigger and chewier and juicier. But we'll leave the ultimate decision to you, the fruit chews, better in France. And then they talk about the salted butter caramels. 
salted caramel is so popular, you might, you might think it's been around forever. But in reality, humans um, figured out space travel before they figured out this now iconic flavor. It was only 1977 that confectioners Henri Leroux debuted. Debuted, debuted his first salted caramel made with Brittany's famous sea salted butter, and then it exploded. By 1980, it was voted the country's best candy, and by 2008, it had gone global, with Haagen Dazs and Starbucks debuting salted caramel products. With this bonbon, you'll taste the salted caramel that started it all, and find out for yourself why this French flavor has stuck around quite literally. And that's that. <laughs> so. What do you think that made you hungry? I always have a link down below of all the different boxes I subscribe to, so you can go into them if you want to start getting your own box. And uh, I encourage you to share this video with others. <laughs> so comment below, share, like, subscribe. And I hope I've made you all hungry for some candy. <laughs> I love you all. Bye.